Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 62 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where today I'm going to try to make a tree farm again. Every every now and then I do a series where it takes me like four or five different attempts to make a tree farm, because there's plenty of tree farms that we can make that we've done a million times before, like the Create Tree Farm, pretty standard, right? Like Industrial Foregoing has a tree farm. There's many, many, many ways to make a tree farm, and I like to try and change it up. So like every series, I'm like, let me try something new. And inevitably, there is a series... And this is one of them where I try three or four things new and none of them work out long term. And for one reason or another. How many attempts at a tree farm have I made so far on this series that just nope, has not worked out for us? So today we shall try again and we're going to do it with drones from Pneumaticraft. Will it work? I don't know. Drones are entities and they might die. Uh, generally what happens with entities when you try to make a tree farm is the tree grows into the space that the entity is in, and then the entity suffocates and dies. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that going to happen with these? I have no idea. We're going to find out together, and it'll be an adventure that we together enjoy. Um, so let's start out with checking out drones and how fun and cool they are. So the first thing I need to do in order to get drones up and running is set up a nice little charging station and flux compressor because we're going to need a place for the drones to charge themselves in the event that they want to, uh, you know, have power and, and all that good stuff. So I'm thinking if, if I just did this and this, would that be like sufficiently cool? Now the thing, there is, there is a little bit of effort involved in getting... Um, your flux compressor up and running, okay? Uh, so we're gonna want uh, emit on a, probably a high signal here to get up and running. So he doesn't have a signal yet. Um, maximum energy uses 40R for tick, maximum input rate 80R for tick, stored energy. Uh, I can throw a few speed upgrades in this bad boy, which wouldn't be a terrible idea. And that should be cool, right? Yeah, it should be fine. Now, the only downside with this is measuring the amount of pressure in here, because I will want him to shut off at some point. Now, this generator can get up to 20 bars of pressure, which is cool. Uh, and this guy can get up to 20 bars, and this guy can hold what? I don't know what he can hold, but I guess we'll find out together. Uh, what I'm thinking is we throw um, a, a gauge on this dude so that we can... Please get me some compressed ingots. That would be cool. You know, while you're at it, can you get me like 20 more of those? That would be awesome. And an expansion card. So what I'm thinking is maybe, yep, I know. There wasn't that much air in there anyway. Sounds like a lot, but there wasn't. And then where's my charging station? There you go. And then we can have you with an upgrade and you will simply emit when less than 15 bars of pressure. How's that sound? Cool. I like that. I like that. Get myself some redstone. Get myself that redstone quill that I've really started to enjoy playing with. I mean, I really like this redstone quill thing. It is super cool. Isn't it super cool? Like, it's just, it's just, it's just good. Like... It's simple, and it accomplishes a task that is very annoying to do in, in vanilla Minecraft, and that is precise control on where the redstone goes, right? Because redstone is very not good at determining where it should connect to and not. Um, so, so having this precise control like this is just awesome for me. Now, the one thing I will say about the flux compressor is it gets hot. Okay, and the heat is bad. Heat um, will will lower your uh, efficiency. So the compressor is running at suboptimal efficiency. Efficiency is at 90%, so it is not ideal. What we're gonna want is some heat vents, heat sinks, if you will. Uh, and I'm gonna just, and that might cool things down for me. So that should lower the temperature a little bit. Now, because we do have this guy on, And I probably didn't want to break that block, to be fair. I'm going to do that and that so that you can do this and then this and then this and then this again. That should be cool. All right, so are you going to chill out a little bit now? Uh, so the more heat sinks, the better, uh, as, you will, as you will discover with these things, because they do get very hot. Uh, that is the downside 
for the cheapness that is the RF to pressure conversion, the uh, the temperature going up is, is significant. Now, in fairness, I do have four speed upgrades in here, so it's very quickly getting the pressure up and running. Uh, but that's okay. I'm cool with that. Now, we should be able to put our drone in there, and he will charge up. And I'm even going to throw a speed upgrade or two into that guy, and that'll speed up the pressure um, charging. Now, the other cool thing is I made a dispenser upgrade for this guy, which has another nice effect, is the dispenser upgrade will charge uh, or allow drones to fly here and charge themselves. So right now, he's got a little bit of pressure going on. Uh, I really want more speed upgrades, and I really didn't teach you how to make speed upgrades, and I'm debating if I should. Uh, that might not be a terrible idea, but if we want more of it, we're going to need a stack of sugar. And yes, I know I already had some, but that's okay. And some lapis, and then you, and you, and you should be cool. Okay, and then how are you doing? Eh, not bad. Maybe some more redstone wouldn't be a terrible idea. And then I also want to see how's this all behaving. He's actually good except LPG. LPG has uh, has backstuffed on me. So maybe I should add um, an LPG dude here. This is just a visual Ender Tanks being weird thing. It is not really not full. Um, because yeah, right now this thing's not running. What I need to do is I need to get this stuff to void excess. That's what I really need to do. Um, and we're going to add that shortly-ish. What I'll do in the meantime is let's do this. What I'd like to have as an ultimate tank as a buffer. So do you know how to make, you do know how to make these. Let's teach you how to make these. Okay, and then these, and then these. One, two, three. And I can get a couple more ultimate tanks. I think just two more should be sufficient for now. And then how's my laser node situation? Not bad. Let me just get like a dozen more of those. Oh, we're short on glass, because of course we are. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna teach you how to turn glass to make glass from sand. We aren't that low on glass. Short on. Clear glass? Why are you using clear glass for stuff? I have no idea. Where is my laser node? Yeah, you shouldn't be doing clear glass, buddy. What you should do is you should know how to make glass panes. There's your problem. He doesn't know how to make glass panes, so he defaulted to clear glass. My bad. Okay, so now, not clear glass, but glass panes. And now you're cool. And I thought we had substitutions enabled, but maybe I'm wrong. What do I know? Okay, so then back to pneumatic land. So the problem is, is we keep backstuffing on something like LPG. It's been all kinds of stuff. And you guys are just... I'm going to vocally complain about this on camera all the time. It's just what I'm going to do. All right, so then let's move you to here. How's that sound? Okay. Okay, I have no idea. Are we actually out of that? We are, we are out of that. And the reason we're out of that diesel is because we stopped making any more because LPG is full, right? Okay, so then you guys, ultimate tanks. Can go there 
And then we'll have a couple laser IO nodes here and here. And the challenge will be I wonder if I can, have I ever tried doing this? I don't think so, but can I do a fluid insert to there? Is that, I mean, the laser, the line's drawing, right? So, I mean, in theory, that could work. I think it's a tank like any other, right? So what I could do is I can make you a high priority. And on the down, I'm gonna have a fluid insert with a high priority. And then on this side, you're going to extract a bucket a second is fine. And on this side, you're going to extract a bucket a second is fine for now. And then over here will be priority zero input, as will you. Right? So he'll prioritize going into these things, right? And just to prove this out, let's do coal. So if I, now I didn't connect these laser points yet. So if this is working, he will start draining LPG out of here and keeping the pipe full, right? And we'll know that's working because this will disappear. It may not be working. It may not be working. It's possible, it's possible. But I'm going to have to do something with you. Push, pull. None? Normal? That would be cool if that worked. That would be cool if that worked. Wouldn't it be cool if that worked? Would be cool if that worked. Alas, it does not. All right, so then what we're gonna have to do is change it up. So if you can't handle that, so then what I'm gonna have to do is remove you. I'm just gonna get rid of all these. And yes, I'm voiding LPG. But as a reminder, I have too much LPG. Okay, and then we can laser node you to here and to here, and then on the down, you will get the high priority of 10. Cool. And yeah, it's a little bit dire wiry, but that's okay. So now what it should be doing is draining the LPG here. It'll keep this guy full as a high priority, and then priority zero, which is normal priority, will be to fill up these tanks. Now at some point, what I'm gonna do, and I should probably connect you to here, right? So you'll keep diesel in here at all times as a high priority, right, 10, and then you'll eventually add diesel to this guy. Now, none of these systems are connected to each other, which is why I didn't need to do filters, right? They're all kind of their own thing. I will uh, at some point need to do trash cans, and we'll just make that a priority of negative 10, and that'll be, that'll be fine. Okay, so that should be cool. Did you get me more? You did, thank you. Now let's go home. <laughs> And at some point I could add like keep redstone and coal inside the thingies and then I could do a crafter for these guys if I wanted to. We'll see. We shall see. All right, look how much junk I have in my inventory. My goodness. Let's put it all away. You guys go away. You go away. You're going to go here. I don't think I'm going to need any laser IO stuff for what we're about to do. Nor do I think I'll need any of these cables just yet. So that should be cool. Yeah, it's pretty cleaned up. Heat sinks are good. So if we go out here, I'm going to sleep this night. Just because I can. How are you doing with the charging station? See, because I put the dispenser on there, he has the ability to charge, which is neato. So you've got that. I'm going to throw a few more of these in here. So now if I put you in here, he should charge up a lot faster, which is cool. But I'm only going to give him half a bar pressure because we need to get into programming drones. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Dun, 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 dun. I love this system. It's so good. It's so cool. Um, 
So the way this works is you put your drone in the top right and you write a program inside this big area here. And once you do that, you write it, export it into the drone, and then the drone will do the tasks in the program. Does that sound cool? So there's a bunch of little symbols and tabs and things that you can put in there to program your drone. And you uh, basic widgets are easy. If you do medium and expand this, you'll see there's, there's a lot more because you can do like conditionals and stuff. Uh, and then you can get into the advanced ones, which get really complicated. We'll start with easy and see if we can do a tree farm with easy, right? So what we need to do is first, let's look at all the different widgets that are available. You always need to start, uh, I believe. And then from there, you can have things happen. So you can have your drone attack stuff. It can dig out an area. It can harvest stuff. It can place blocks. It can right click things for you. It can right click entities. It can pick up items. It can drop items. It can void items. All kinds of cool stuff, right? Export to inventory, import from inventory transport fluids so it can move fluids around it can move items around it can move entities around it can move rf around there's all kinds of stuff it can do it can go to a location it can teleport to a location uh it can emit a redstone signal like literally there's a lot of cool things it can do right um it can craft things for you it can do logistics i don't know what that is oops press i or middle click for info oh logistics widget uh cool we'll be how oh nice okay that's cool acts like a logistics drone. Sweet. Hey, cool. It renders a little drone on there when you're when you're editing it. I never noticed that before. Either that or it's new. I'm not sure which, but that's pretty cool. Look at that. Uh, it's cool. I like it. All right. So let's start. Let's make a basic program, right? Because that's what we're here to do today. So all you got to do is drag your widget onto here, right? Errors. No piece connected on the bottom. Press I for info. So the start widget is where you always start. This is where your program begins. It must exist and there can be only one. Okay. Um, and you can mouse wheel in and out to give yourself a little bit more of a view of the area. And I think if you hold left click, you can move around. So from there, let's have the drone. Um, so we're also going to need a couple things. We're going to need GPS uh, tools, GPS area tool. So GPS tool and GPS area tool are two different things, uh, both of which we're going to need. It looks like I need some more plastics. So you know what I should do? What I should do is... I really want to focus on this drone stuff, but at some point I should make it so that these plastics are uh, storage buffer chest. Okay. Uh, so we're going to need a GPS tool. And we're going to need a GPS area tool, which needs two GPS tools. Easy enough. Okay. Okay. So let's just have a drone that's going to break an area, right? Whenever you're doing any kind of programming, start simple and then make it more complex. This is the way you do it. If you try to make a drone, especially if you're new to programming, if you try to make a drone that does everything we want it to do, which is clear out the trees in an area, drop the items into a chest, well, pick up the items first, then drop them into a chest, then grab saplings, then plant the saplings, wait, like all these tasks feel overwhelming to somebody who's not a developer. So if you're... If you're getting started with drones or any kind of programming, my recommendation to you is start simple and then build upon it. It's called iterating. You get, you know, start with a very simple task. So our first task will be, let's clear the blocks in an area. So I'm going to specify an area and then have the drone break all the blocks in that area. Okay. So to do that is pretty straightforward. First off, we're going to want, I'm pretty sure dig is what we're looking for. So if we middle click this, we'll see what dig does. We'll dig or mine the blocks in the area specified. Items that are dropped from the blocks will not be picked up by the drone. The order in which the blocks will be dug is similar to the place widget. Also in common with the place widget, you can control if the area should be dug layer by layer, top to bottom or bottom to top. You can make the drone import a pickaxe, shovel, etc., to make it use that tool. When the drone carries around multiple tools, the most suitable tools automatically used for the block being dug. You can prevent the drone from trying to dig without a tool, which is really slow, by checking the required digging checkbox. Okay. So first off, um, let's start with just having it dig, but then we will change it to have it grab an axe and then dig. Does that sound cool? Um, and in preparation for this, maybe I will make. Uh, an unbreakable pickaxe, a.k.a. the really cool gobber one, right? So uh, this guy has a end axe. So now, and that's unbreakable, right? So we can use that to make him dig, and we don't have to worry about replacing broken axes, right? So very first thing we want him to do is dig. So we'll throw a dig area right there, and you'll notice it snaps to and connects to um, the start. Now you're getting an error, no area specified. So 
Whenever you have an, a, a, a command like this, you have to specify the area within which to dig. He's not going to just dig anywhere. You have to tell him where to dig. And that's how we, to, uh, to do that, we right click the widget and we can modify uh, some settings. So order, let's do high to low. So start at the top and dig down. Uh, requires digging tool. I'm going to leave that off for now because we're going to start simple. We're just going to have him dig. Limit interactions. At, if checked at most, the specified number of blocks or any interactions we've done before moving to the next widget in the program. Okay, I don't think we need to worry about that. Okay, cool. Um, now to uh, specify your area, we have to get a GPS tool. So I'm going to call this block the center of my tree farm. Okay, so let's have it go. Let's make it a like one, two, three, four. Right, so one, two, three, and the fourth block. One, two, three, and then the fourth block, but we want to go up, right? Because trees can get pretty tall. They might even need to be taller than that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify. Oops. Hey. You can put that here, right? So left click to set the first on an area tool, and then right click to set the second. And you'll see this is the area now, which is gonna be harvested from, right? So to show that again, it's left click, right? To set position one, right click to set position two, and then the entire area will be shown. So that's the area within which the drone will be allowed to dig, okay? And then if we go in here, I think I just, Click it or right click it. And there's a thing I gotta do. Oh, right, I know, hold on. Uh, area, there's an area tool. Uh, where is it? Text, item filter, area, this is it. So you'll notice when I drag this in here, see how there's like a little triangle position? Okay, it snaps to the area position here. So this dig area, this, this connection here is that. Uh, this is for, I think, filters um, and then go-tos and other stuff. So I think this is the right way to do it, I'm pretty sure. Now, if we right click this widget, we'll be able to specify the area, right? Select P1 from GPS tool, okay? Select P2 from GPS tool. So you, now you'll see, um, oh, okay, it's left click and then right click. That's what we want, right? So left click your GPS tool to get P1 and then right click your GPS tool to get P2. And then you'll get 540.69 to 532.82. And that's the area, right? Area type box, which is what we want. You could also do like, you know, other area types. If you want to preview the area, you can kind of see what it looks like, but I think we're good. Whether the box is filled or not. So lots of controls on which blocks are allowed to be broken here, okay? And that may be all we need to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, required puzzle pieces three, available puzzle pieces zero, not enough puzzle pieces. Oh, right, we need to place puzzle pieces next to this thing. I think what we need to do is put a chest down and teach you about puzzle pieces. Um, programming puzzle pieces are made like so. I'll just get a bunch, cool. So now we have enough puzzle pieces. Required three, available 48, so we program him. And he took it out, right? So now let's um, place the drone. Now is he, it's it's inclusive to the area, right? So you're not gonna break these blocks, I hope. Oh, you are gonna break those blocks. So maybe we should modify this. Uh, we should have the start point be here because we don't want him breaking the dirt underneath. So let's modify him, right? So if we put the drone in there, we edit this. 70 to 82, okay? And now we don't forget, you have to write the drone to the program. Uh, the program to the drone, I mean, okay? So that should be cool. So now if we replace these guys with dirt, what should happen is the drone should break all my blocks for me when I place them in the world. So first thing he's going to do is go charge, okay? Sweet. Look at that go. Pressure building up. Nice. And if I threw a few more of these in here, he would probably charge a little bit faster for me. Yeah, now we're cooking. Go, little drone, go. I don't know how high you'll get. Okay, to 10. And now he's going to go break all the blocks that are inside that area. See him breaking them? See how slow he is? Because he doesn't have a tool? Yeah, that's what's up. 
He's doing it. I like it. All right. So, uh, by the way, you can shift right click a drone with any wrench and it'll kill the drone entity and drop the drone item. Cool. So now let's have the, the drone pick up a tool. Um, so I'm going to break these all by hand. Okay. And I'm going to get a sapling here. And we're going to run into a problem. And I want you to think about what problem we may run into based on everything we just did. Okay. What problem are we going to run into? We'll see in a moment. So let's have um, a chest whose job it will be to hold uh, the axe that we want, right? So you're going to hold on to the end axe. And I'm going to program that chest location with a regular GPS tool by shift right clicking on it and the coordinates are set. So before you go to dig things, I'm going to move this guy out and notice how the area moves along with the dig location, right? I would like you to get an item out of said chest. So let's find the pickup item import from inventory, I think might be it. This will make the drone move to the nearest inventory within the specified area, extract items from that inventory and insert them into the drone's inventory. That's what we want. Okay, that's what we want. So uh, import item from inventory. Oh, you don't want to just click it, you want to drag it. Okay, so first thing we want to do is tell it what inventory to get from. And for that, we're going to drag the area guy in. And we're just going to specify uh, the GPS tool. Now, can I like, I guess not. Uh, so the GPS tool and the GPS tool. This is a little different, I think, than it used to work before. But if we preview area now, we'll see it just highlights that area in the background and that's it. So that's where he's allowed to get items from. Okay, now we want to tell it what item to get. Uh, so for that, we're going to want an item filter, and that looks like it fits right here. And if we right click that, we can specify the items. So we can search for an item or search my player's inventory. So I'll just search my inventory and choose the end axe. Okay. And we will say to ignore all these values because we don't care about them. If we wanted to, we could just search for item and then we could search, you know. But since I had it in my inventory, it was easier just search my player inventory. Cool. So now let's write that to the drill. Okay. And let's get ready to grow our tree and see if this works. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm excited to see if this works. All right, Mr. Drone, do your thing. Uh, first things first, grab this and then go. So he should, step one, fly over and get the end axe. Step two, break from top to bottom. How cool is that? If I gave him a Paxel, do you think he would break? Paxels maybe break trees faster? I mean, the leaves at least. That's pretty cool. And he's just going to sit there and wait for the next task, right? And in theory, what he's actually doing is he's repeating this, right? So he goes back to the top and he's now trying to get the item from the inventory and dig the area and get the item from the inventory and dig the area. Just repeating this over and over and over again. So I'm going to I'm gonna pick him up and I'm going to try and change this to a Paxel and see if that makes my life a little bit cooler. Um, so to do that, we're going to need some more end gobber ingots, which needs some more of these, which needs some more netherite scrap. I think I taught you scrap, didn't I? One, two, two. I'm going to need two sets, right? Because I need one ingot for the shovel, and then I need also an end gobber rod. So I need that, and then the pickaxe. Hey, did you just make a... You made a hoe? That's not what I said to do. I said make a pickaxe. I guess I was short on stuff. Well, that's not ideal. Uh, we'll just have to do this again. We can't be low on end gobber globs, can we? Uh, we can be only because I have more that I haven't crafted. So we don't want the hoe anymore. We want the axe and the pickaxe, right? We need more chorus flowers. We've got a few of them that we can handy have. 
Okay, uh, so make two more sets of view, and then we needed the pickaxe. And then we needed the thank you. Good, we have just enough. Cool. And now we can get another Paxel. And that will be the item of choice for the drone to pick up. Okay, so now we're going to edit the item filter, search our inventory, choose the end Paxel, and then remember to store that in the drones thing. Now if we give them a Paxel, we get another sapling here. Whoopsie. In fairness, the drone should clear out these mistakes for me. Okay, and let's see if the drone can clear the, the stuff faster this way. So give the Paxel and drone go. Go get the Paxel. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Look at him go, look at him go. Look at him go. All right, you ready for the problem now? You guys ready for the problem? Have you figured out what the problem's gonna be? I'll give you a hint. He breaks any blocks inside this area, including saplings. He's not gonna let the sapling grow. Um, so so let's, let's handle that situation, okay? Um, so let's handle that situation. Uh, let's have him filter what he's allowed to harvest. Uh, and we will just say item filter. Is there another kind of filter? Fluid filter, entity attack, item filter. Is there a block filter? There's item and block. What if I put it in medium? Is there a filter? No. How about advanced? There's a conditional item filter. That might be more complicated than I need. So let's try this. Um, can I check to match by block instead of dropped items? Use this if you need to match blocks which don't drop anything when broken by the drone's currently equipped tool. Uh, to match by block instead of dropped item. I think what I want to do is put it on this side though, and that makes it, if I'm not mistaken, whoops. Uh, the place widget. Limiting the place count, filtering. Finally, you can specify which box is room for the filter. Uh, connect on the right to whitelist items, connect on the left to blacklist items. So if I say saplings on the left, it says blacklist saplings. So by putting it on this side, it means you're not allowed to break saplings. Putting it on this side means you're only allowed to break saplings. So this is what I want, I think. Okay, and then I would like to do a go-to. Um, and what I'd like to have him do is fly, I want him to sit over the chest, okay? So I'm gonna move that guy there. And I'd like him to do a go-to command because I don't want him to stay where the trees might be growing. Because if he stays right where he is like he has been, a tree might grow into him and kill him, right? Um, so go-to location will be your next task. And the area of that location will be the GPS tool. Okay. So if we do-do-do-do. Um, and we preview the area, that should be there is where he goes when he's done working. Cool. So now, I know I should have put a block there. Uh, do you still have my GPS coordinates? You do, good. Okay, so the center of this area is what? Is it this block? Oopsie.
right? So it's this one is the center because one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This should be the right. So this is the center, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this should be the center. Cool. And then that, let's put something there that's not gonna grow. Does coarse dirt allow me to plant saplings on it? I kind of want it to like stand out. Yeah, there you go. So see how it's not breaking the sapling now? Because I said saplings are blacklisted. If I grow him, he'll fly over. He'll break all the blocks. Oh, hold on. He doesn't have his paxel. Hey, you. Maybe I should add that you're not allowed to break things without the paxel command. Yeah, let's do that. So for dig, uh, requires digging tool. Okay. And hopefully he recognizes the Paxel as an appropriate digging tool. So he should get his Paxel now, and he should be cool. Hear how much faster he is? How cool is that? All right, and now I'm happy. And then remember, we added a go-to location, and he's just going to chill over the chest now. Good deal? All right, so let's wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time and augment this program to do way more. So we want him to pick up the drops he gets, and we want him to plant saplings for us. And I think that would be a good way to go. So for now, Doll20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time and have more fun with drones. For now, take it easy.